What's up everyone and welcome to our League of Legends Top 5 Play Show here on YouTube. Be sure to stay until the end for a fun and different kind of bonus clip to end the show. A mystery if you will. Starting off this episode at our number 5 play, we have Gustix on Pantheon, and at the start we see he's low in health and Ari is coming to gank him from his jungle, but remember he has no vision on her. He walks towards his tribe brush and then all of a sudden he gets charmed, but he instantly cleanses it, avoiding the return damage from the orb, and then jumps to Alistar with a lightning fast decision and flashes back to his tower. Realizing they can easily dive when he has nothing up, he goes for it, starting Grand Skyfalls, Ari ults towards him and he gets hit, but right before his second charge he narrowly escapes in between his tier 2 and 3 turrets at top lane. Juking his or her way into her fourth place spot is Pregnant Girl and Malphite. We see Gragas body slam in an altar dealing a lot of damage as she retreats back and then he uses his Q but she flashes just in time. He body slams in closer and ignites waiting for his Q to come up. Malphite uses a health potion to help stay alive and then he jukes both the spear and barrel then pathing into the jungle. Gragas falls using his Z as a Kali jumps on in Italy grabbing the kill. Gragas decides to keep on following the Malphite but as she nears the exit Gragas flash body slams but she jukes it out again turning around to land a Q for the movement speed as Malphite and Skarna stay around making sure he can't jump over the wall or escape securing the kill. Incredible jukes. At our number 3 spot for this week, we have Orange Tile on Maokai, and he's headed towards the fight taking place near Baron. He throws his sapling and W's in immediately, throwing down his ultimate to help out Draven, but Tristana knocks him both right into the center of the enemy team. They focus on Draven, and with nothing up to help him out, he goes down, making it a 4v1. He cuts back towards mid lane, but gets pulled in, but thanks to the Trist jump, he can twist that advance back out and then pick up the kill. Ran comes around from Baron and isolates the Ezreal, allowing for Maokai to fight it out with Blitz and Ari. He chooses to get on Blitz first because Ari is Oom, and then Blitzcrank tries to run, but then he gets the kill, despite having low health. He then jumps right back to Ari with the Twisted Advance into auto attacks with Red Buff, and then the Sapling for the kill. Ezreal Arcane shifts, so he starts retreating, but then he puts down his ultimate, and Ezreal immediately turns around, but it's too late. He picks up the kill on Ace and becomes the last one standing in this game. Coming in at our number 2 spot is Keith Law and Galio, but this is a great team play overall. At the beginning of this play, we see Pantheon and Alton and get on Annie, so they go in, but then they very quickly realize they are losing and try to back off. Not fight Alton, and then he goes on the graves, but Soraka heals him as he tries to make it back to the tower. Annie flashes in to burst him down, but Amumu Banish tosses in on her and then ults, allowing for his safety. We see Galio teleporting in behind them all from top lane, and as soon as he shows up, he ults him, swapping the momentum of the fight as the enemy team gets melted down, and they start to chase them down, picking up tons of kills. The support from Soraka and then Amumu's bandage toss and ult to save the graves combined with the teleport behind them during the snare from Amumu's ult allows for this turnaround ace and unofficial quad for the Galio. And for our number one pro play for this week we have Bard Wooders on graves and at the start of this clip we see that his team got caught and he's the last man standing. He managed to escape so the enemy team decides to neglect his presence and push mid for the win. He originally was going to recall to try and defend long enough to buy his team time to respawn, but then his team calls for him to just backdoor. As you can see right now, the enemy Amumu is back at his base to defend against Graves. Garen and Corky are running down mid to start on the inhibitor, and Blitzcrank and Fiddlesticks are in the middle of the map pushing the minions for mid lane. As Graves starts on the tier 3 top turret, we see Amumu flash and he misses his bandage toss, but he goes in anyways, forcing Graves to back off the tower. He throws down smoke screen and then turns around with the buckshot, getting on Amumu as the enemy team gets the inhib and runs towards the Nexus turrets. Amumu at this point is just trying to stall, he figures he should see the victory within a few moments from now, but he goes down and Graves continues. He decides screw this as he runs past the tower to join up with his minions at the Nexus turrets. His first turret goes down back at base and the enemy team realizes that since he has been pushing, he forced Fiddlesticks and Amumu back to base and now they don't have enough damage to finish it off because blue team is respawning. With them retreating and taking whatever they can on the way back, Fiddlesticks rushes in on the low health Graves, but he turns the buckshot and then lands a nice smoke screen into a dash forward as he gets fear, but he instantly quicksilver sashes the CC and kills him through the drain. By now the enemy team set their gears to head back to base to defend. TF ports in on them, they finish off Corky and Garen, and now Blitzcrank has come to defend after running all the way back up through mid lane. He tries to make his move, popping his W and then lining up the pull, and with the Nexus turret on him, he sneaks in the flash, getting out of there with barely any health left, turning the lifesteal on his way out. Now his team finally makes it to him, and together they take down the last remaining tower and Nexus to win the game. The choice to push instead of recall applied enough pressure to send Amumu back and split up the enemy team's push to win. When Amumu went down, Fiddlesticks went back, and with a very well played 1v1 with QSS, he defeated him as well. The enemy team kept sending one back to defend, figuring it would be easy to stall, but the persistence of Graves was just what his team needed to slow them down tremendously and ultimately take the game. MVP. <laughs> For the special bonus clip of the week, leave a comment down below to help solve the mystery.
Keep in mind that Renekton did not have teleport this game and Wukong had already knocked him up so it isn't the bug where they go flying in the sky. Wukong moved with the Renekton outside of the bush and he had flash but you don't see him use it in the bush or hear it. How did he pull this trick? Leave your answer in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching everyone and have a wonderful day.